Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at the new version of Generate Blocks. The Generate Blocks team just released a new version of their Gutenberg plugin, version 1.5, and it's a game changer. It unleashes dynamic data and advanced layouts, making them available in the free version that can be used with any theme. In this video, I'll quickly show you the differences between the previous version and the new version, and then take a quick look at the new query loop block. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps to spread the word about the channel. The free version of Generate Blocks is available in the WordPress plugin directory. You can see right now it's on version 1.5.1. Okay, I have a test site here with some demo data and a custom post type. If we go look at the themes, you can see right now I have the free version of the Cadence theme installed. I do have the Generate Press theme installed, and we'll come back to the Generate Press theme in just a minute. If we look at the plugins, you can see that I have the old version 1.4.4 of Generate Blocks activated. Okay, and if we look at the dashboard, we see that Generate Blocks, the previous version, had four blocks a container, a grid, a headline, and a button block. In case you're not familiar with Generate Blocks, it has a different take on building in Gutenberg. Rather than supplying a lot of pre-made blocks like info boxes or hero blocks, it gives you the building blocks to put together your own presentation. Okay, so it's a little more work, but it's also very flexible. Now let's see what the previous version offered us in relation to dynamic data. Let's go to a page. And here I have a testing page. And this is a generate blocks headline block. And you notice there's no dynamic data option. Now let's go and enable the premium version of generate press. And this is the pro add-on for Generate Press. Okay, if we go back to our page, we still don't see dynamic data options. However, the premium version of Generate Press and the previous version of Generate Blocks does have some dynamic data options if you're working with the elements feature. This is a pro feature, and let's go look at an element that I created previously, a template for a custom post type. When you're working with the elements feature, here we have the generate blocks headline block again, but now you see a dynamic data option. Okay, so these dynamic data options in the previous version were available in this kind of theme and template building feature of generate press. Okay, now let's go and update. Get the latest version of Generate Blocks. Let's go look at the dashboard. And now we see that there are two more blocks. There's the container, the grid, the headline, and buttons. But there's also a query loop and an image block. In the new version, we got two new blocks. And we'll take a look at the blocks in just a minute. But what I want to show you first is the change in dynamic data options. Let's go back to our page. And here's the headline block. But notice here's a dynamic data option that wasn't there before. Okay, let's go and disable the premium version of Generate Press and switch themes. Go back to our page, and in the Generate Blocks headline block, we still have this dynamic data option. Okay, so that was a roundabout way of showing you that the dynamic data feature is now enabled on the free version of Generate Blocks usable with any theme, and not just in the pro version of Generate Press Elements template feature. So I'm going to go back now and let's just switch back to Generate Press. I'm going to leave the premium version deactivated, okay? 
Let's go to our page now. So we have some new blocks here, the query loop and the image block. Let's take a look at the query loop block. A kind of rule of thumb that the Generate Press documentation recommends is to put it inside a container because that gives you more styling and spacing options around your content. So I'm just going to start with the container block and let's get rid of this headline block here. Okay, so there's the container block and now let's add our query loop in it. And one of the things I like about generate blocks is you notice how easy it is to drop a block onto another generate block block. <laughs> Sometimes in other block collections, it's kind of hard to get the blocks to drop in the right place. Anyway, so I'm just going to take one of these pre-designed layouts to start. Okay, and so here we've got a list of posts. A couple of things of interest here is one, this is similar to the core query loop block, which is a big deal in core. Of course, as we've come to expect from Generate Press, it's like the core block, but better. For example, if we look here at the blocks that are making up our list, we see it's automatically added a container block around these. You can achieve something like that with core if you put them in a group block, but this is just kind of doing it automatically. And of course, in the generate press version of the container block, you have many more options, full width, inner container, inner container width, tag name, you have topography, spacing, border, color, background, including you can use an image as a background, shapes, you have dynamic data if you want to pull in an image dynamically for the background. Very feature rich there. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's add some spacing. So I'll put a little padding around it. Okay, and then I'm going to go to colors background and let's give it a little background. Okay, now let's add the featured image. Okay, and I'll put this at the top. This is kind of like the core block, but again, if you look over here, you have a lot more settings for the layout, spacing, colors, dynamic data. So let's go and have it be the featured image. So that was all easy. Another kind of nice thing about the generate press version of the image block is you know when you select the core image block, you get this option down here for the caption. It can sometimes get in the way a little bit. The way the generate block image block enables that is you click on the button here to add a caption. So anyway, just a little refinement. All right, so right there we have our custom post list that we can do very easily. Let's go to the query loop block. Let's make it four posts per page, just so we don't have to scroll as much. Now, inherit query from template. That's just like the core option. If you're using this like in an archive or something, then you would enable that and it would use that query. But with it disabled, we have the option to select the post types. So I could switch this to pages or books. Let's go ahead and switch it now to books. For some layout here, let's add a grid block. And let's just put this one in there. And one of the things that is a little funky about the generate blocks is that all of your text related fields, it's calling a headline block, but you can change that then to be a paragraph or div or whatever you need. And it's saying that the excerpt is not supported here, but it, it will show on the front end. Okay, let's put a little space here between the image and the text. 
generate blocks gives us some other features of the query loop block that we don't have available with core and these are the query parameters so we've set the post type and the post per page but it exposes some other ones see i can't select it again because it's already added but you can have page you can have offset you can have order by author exclude authors taxonomy exclude taxonomy post status parent parent exclude include post exclude post sticky post option and date before and after options so those are additional parameters that you can add to the query for the loop all right let's just go ahead and update now and let's go preview in a new tab all right and here is our list of book records read more but there's only four showing and this is another slight difference with the core query loop block you add a block at the bottom and search and you can find pagination which just shows when you're in the query loop block for generate blocks there's this plus sign here to add pagination and then it's just added automatically so let's update that and refresh so there's the pagination now we've done the quick comparison of the previous version of generate blocks with the new version now for some discussion and conclusions in the first part of the walkthrough i showed the differences between the previous version of generate blocks and the new version besides the new image block there are two big additions first as i showed dynamic data options have been made available in the free version no matter what theme you're using this is a game changer prior to this release gutenberg block collections locked dynamic data options behind a premium version they're now available to everyone without purchase the second big addition is the generate blocks version of the query loop block this block is easy to use, doesn't have the lag I've sometimes seen with the core version, and it enables custom grid and list layouts with styling features missing from core. These features are pretty much a gift to the WordPress community from the GeneratePress team. They unleash the power and flexibility of dynamic data and advanced layouts for all WordPress users. The new version of Generate Blocks doesn't have the pre-designed blocks found in most block collections. But Generate Blocks is now the most powerful and flexible free block add-on available for Gutenberg. So that's my look at the new version of Generate Blocks 1.5. There's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video interesting. Thank you for watching.